Hey everybody, hey it's Corey from Country Family and today I'm getting my, my lean-to concrete slab ready to pour. So what I'm going to do is show you how I set it up and how to level the sand. Um, I made this rake uh, from 2x4 scraps and a 2x4 and I used that set at 4 inches deep, those teeth on the rake and that gives me my my depth of my concrete where the sand needs to be. So let me show you a few other details here. So you can see here, here's my outer form board and that's got a slope of about two inches in 10 feet. So this is 10 feet across. I sloped it down about two inches on that end and if I did get any blowing rain up in there it'll drain off really good. So I set this end um, I'm actually pouring a deep rat wall here and here because that face of that concrete is going to be exposed on on this corner. There's going to be a step there and over here is going to be a concrete slab to put my rain barrel on to catch my rainwater off of my gutters that are going to be right up there. So that's what that's all about. But then the rest of it is just straight four inch thick concrete slab. So I got these form boards, snapped the line across the whole length, and I screwed them to the poles. And I also put a stake in halfway between each pole to make sure it doesn't bow out. And then I backed it up with dirt so that'll keep that form board there nice and nice and secure. Along the wall of the barn up against the tow board I put the foam expansion joint. I snapped a line all the way down the length of it and I put that up to that that snap chalk line. And then here I have a garage door so that I put a form board at the right height. I also staked it and then that foam expansion continues all the way down. Okay so I chose my 2x4 for a screed board and what I did was I, I screwed these 2x4 teeth to it. Um, it's four inches thick slab so I measured down four inches and I put them all at that height. And then when I run my scrape board across it scrapes the sand at four inches down. Now I can see I'm a little bit high so I'll just take the come along or a rake or whatever and scrape that down to that level. Then come back up and check it again. Pretty good in most places, a little high there. So that's assuming you've already compacted everything, which I've done here. This has been compacted. Um, any loose stuff that I scrape and or if I need to add a little bit, I'll compact that with the, with the hand tamper. Also wetting it down with the hose really helps. Uh, that dry loose sand just won't compact good at all. So. Wet it down good, compact it, check your level, scrape it off, add more, whatever you gotta do. 
And that's, that's basically it to get the sand ready. And then once your sand is done all the way down, I'm gonna add rebar in this slab. You could do uh, mesh rebar, you could do fiber added to the concrete, which is what I'm gonna do on the floor of my garage because I don't wanna mess with the rebar or the mesh on top of my PEX tubing for my in-floor heat. But out here I'm gonna use rebar. Wetting the sand down before you pour helps to ensure that your concrete doesn't dry too fast and doesn't set up on you too fast before you can finish it. If this slab was indoors, I would put a plastic vapor barrier down and then that wouldn't be a concern. But I'm pouring this directly on the sand and I want to make sure that the sand is really wet before the truck shows up so I don't have the issue of the concrete drying too fast from underneath because that sand will suck the moisture right out of that concrete. So I want to bend a 90 on this rebar. They do make special benders for it, um, but I found that you can use a conduit bender pretty easily. So I want to go 24 inches to the top of my bend. So with a half inch conduit bender, you have to subtract five, put the two foot mark right at the arrow, There's my nice 90 degree bend. I'm go one foot in. Do that for four more. Well, as you can see, I have my rebar grid in. I have them on, I wanted to go two by two squares, but there ended up being two by three. I just, I ran out of rebar, so I had to space it out. But the sand is all packed down, leveled out. Rebar is in. Um, now I'm just getting ready. The truck will be here this afternoon. So I got my tools all out. I have my bowl float. I have a large finishing trowel that I have not used one of these yet, so this will be my first time. And then I'm going to put a light broom finish on it because it is outdoors. So here's my finishing broom here. Any of these tools that you don't have, you can you can rent them from a rental place, or a lot of times the uh, the ready mix supplier will have a bull float on their truck too. So I'm just uh, getting some finishing touches ready here this morning and the uh, truck will be here this afternoon. I was fortunate that we could get the truck back behind the barn and we didn't have to use wheelbarrows for any of the concrete. We could shoot it all into place. I will have to fill some ruts in my father-in-law's yard though because the truck had to make a big wide swing to get back there. So the driver can pretty much get it where it needs to go here and then I got my boys working the come-alongs and they just push and pull it 
to get it in place and kind of get it leveled out before uh, the screen board comes along. I apologize that I didn't get any footage of me using the Fresno. What I ended up doing was I bolt folded it a couple times and then I used the Fresno a couple times. I got it nice and smooth and then I went over it with the broom. Now normally on a slab like this I would get out on knee boards and I would hand trouble it to get it nice and flat. But that Fresno did a really good job and in a future video I will show using that Fresno. I have a couple more slabs to pour. Okay, take your hand flat. Ready? And then whoop, put it on not your face. Put your hand down flat and then push it in. Push it in. There's your little hand. That's Jordan's hand. Now we gotta wash your hand. <laughs> you got a little spot right there. That's alright. <laughs> 